Okay, so if you have deconstructed from the religion that you were brought up in, and you have started to question and doubt all these different teachings and doctrines that you were taught, that you were indoctrinated with, but now you're in a season where you don't know what to believe in anymore. You, you know what you don't believe in, and you know why you don't believe in those things, and you, you have spent time studying and researching, and so you're very well informed. You're very educated on why you don't believe what you don't believe in anymore. But now you're in a season where it's like, okay, now what? What's next? What do I actually believe in now? Because I am letting go of the religion, of the tradition, of the belief structure that I was raised with that was really a part of who I was. And now I don't know what to do. I don't know what to believe in anymore. I don't know where to go from here. And that season can be very challenging, and it can be very confusing, and it can be very difficult to, to navigate. And I think the best thing that we can do when we are in that in-between of deconstruction and reconstruction is simply to be still and to go within and to learn how to listen to our own intuitive heart that has been guiding us along the way even when we weren't aware of it, even when we weren't recognizing it. Because that intuition, that deep resonance that all of us have, that you were listening to as you were questioning, as you were rethinking your faith, you know, that that's really the main reason... Uh, most likely why you started this process of deconstruction because something within you knew something was off something within something within you was telling you hey this just doesn't seem right or i know they're telling you that you have to believe in this but do you really believe in this do you believe in it because this is what you want to believe in and you feel like it's right you feel like it's true or are you believing in this because you're being told you have to believe in this and if you don't believe in this then you're going to hell or there's some kind of like divine punishment waiting for you. You start asking yourself those questions, but you, you realize that all throughout your life, or let's, let's say throughout this process of deconstruction, what has led you along the way is this intuitive guidance, this inner knowing, this deep impression that has been just tugging on your heart and guiding you all throughout the way. And so now you're at this point where, okay, you're in the in-between. What's next? What do I believe in? Do I go join a new religion? Do I go join a new church? What do I believe about God now? What do I believe about spiritual community and theology and all these different things, right? But instead of just jumping to the next thing just so you can have some kind of a response, some kind of an answer to tell the people that are asking you, hey, what do you believe now? I heard you're, you left your faith. I heard you left your religion. So what do you believe now? What do you believe about God? What do you believe about Jesus? And do you still go to church? And why don't you go to church? And you, so instead of like thinking that you have to immediately jump to a new belief structure just so you can answer these people, my encouragement to you is to just let it be and to be still and to be in the present moment and to to continue to listen to your intuitive heart because your intuitive heart is going to guide you into this next season of life and what your intuitive heart may be saying to you right now is hey just be still rest enjoy this time and allow Allow whatever is going to come next into your life to come into your life naturally and um, genuinely. Don't try to force it. Don't try to go out and, and search for the, the next thing. And, and don't feel like you have to do that because you don't have to. You don't have to do it. You can simply just be still and allow it to come into your life. If you have the, the posture of being open and just, just being receptive of whatever is going to happen is going to happen, then in the right timing, you're gonna know exactly you know, what to do. And you're gonna know exactly how to view yourself and God and others in the world. You're not gonna to have to like create it on your own. It's gonna start coming to you naturally from your intuitive heart. 
And the most important thing you're going to learn in this season is that being guided by your own intuitive heart is the most important thing that all of us have to learn here on earth. This is what it's really all about. It's about letting go of the mentality of I can only trust these external, you know, leaders and letting go of the external guru, the external teacher and learning about the guru within, learning about the spirit within that leads you into all truth. And when you do that, then it all starts to make sense and there's much more resonance and there's much more, um, you start to live authentically. And by living from your authentic self, then your whole understanding of spirituality is reshaped. And so maybe it's not like the old religion and and the old traditions that you were brought up in. Maybe this new way of, of spirituality for you looks nothing like that. Maybe it's not conventional and it's not traditional. Maybe it's something that is much more in alignment with who you are and what you enjoy and what your talents are and what you are most passionate about. Maybe that's what spirituality is for you now. Maybe it's not about, you know, adhering to a particular belief structure or joining a church or doing any of that. Maybe it's about you experiencing the divine within yourself, seeing that same divine presence within everyone else, and then learning how to love without judgment and recognizing that, you know, if I just, if I'm rooted and grounded grounded in this present moment and I am here now, then everything's going to flow because that's how the intuitive heart works. The intuitive heart, your heart space, is always in the present moment and there's just a flow to life. But if you're in your head space all the time, you're going to be... See that the mind, the head space is always like past or future focused. And so we do need to be in our head space. Obviously, while we're here on earth, it's a, it's a tool we need to think and the analytical mind has its time and place, but we're not supposed to be living there all the time. We're supposed to be rooted in our heart space. And when we need to use the mind, we use the mind, but we're not supposed to be there all the time. And so when we're in, you know, a lot of times with like fundamentalist religion, if that's what you were brought up in, there's always this futuristic focus on, hey, when you get to heaven someday, then you're going to be fully righteous. Then you're going to be sanctified. Then everything's going to be great. Or when Jesus comes back, you know, so it's always futuristic focus. You're never good enough right here, right now in the present moment. You're inherently sinful. You're inherently wicked, all these different things. And there's something has to happen to you. You have to fix yourself in order to be, you know, accepted by God, forgiven by God and in right standing with God. So that's what I'm saying. So, so if we can, if we can shift from being future and past focused and we can learn to just be present here in the eternal now which in reality this is all we have this is all that exists is the present moment the past and future don't really exist they're just thoughts that we have the the past or or yeah the past is a is a thought or a memory occurring in the now and the future is a thought or some kind of anticipation that is occurring in the now but when you get to that moment in the future it's going to be now. And you can't go back into the past. You can't go back into yesterday, right? It's impossible. There's only the now. The now, the eternal now, is all that really exists. And so time is actually relative. It's not absolute. The linear function, function of time is relative. And on the other side, there is no time. There's, it's timeless. It's the eternal now. And so sitting with that, being here now, accepting your authentic self and living from authenticity is the key and it is what a liberated life is all about and you're going to experience more peace and joy from that than you know being a part of some kind of belief structure where you feel like you have to believe in believe in these things in order to be accepted by other people in order to you know get somewhere someday in the future no you'll realize that what you've been searching for, the peace, the joy, the fulfillment, all those things are right here, right now, in the present moment, 
within the depths of your being. Rumi, who was a Sufi mystic, said, you are what you seek. St. Francis of Assisi said, what we are looking for is what is looking. You are what you seek. You already have it. It's within you. It's right here. It's right now. And living from that split, living from that place, living from being instead of the need to do, instead of living from doing, is where you're going to find that ultimate peace that surpasses all understanding. And then your spirituality is going to be completely transformed because it's going to be about direct experience. You're not going to have to go to a church or read a book in order to experience God. You're going to be able to experience God within you directly. It's a direct line. And it's something that everyone has. And so you're going to start seeing other people differently because you're not going to view someone as, okay, they're in, they're out, they're saved, they're lost. No, you're going to see everyone as the divine, as God in disguise. You know, Thomas Merton, he said, he was a uh, Christian mystic. He said, when you see God in everyone, then they see God in you. And that's exactly what happens. That, I think that quote is, is really like the epitome of, of authentic spirituality. It's first and foremost discovering the divine in you and then seeing that same divine presence in everyone as everyone and everything, not just in people, but in all of life and all of the earth. And that's when you really go from separation consciousness, which is really what fundamentalist religion is centered around, to unity consciousness, which is the reality of oneness. And your authentic self fits in perfectly. It aligns with the reality of oneness of life. And I think that's what true spirituality is all about. So can you be spiritual without being religious? Yes. And I think that for many people, it is... um, It can be a challenging jump. It can be hard to navigate at first, but it absolutely is liberating. And you're going to find um, ultimate fulfillment where you least expect it within the depths of your being. It all starts from there. Okay, so thanks for watching this video. If you found it uh, helpful, informative, or insightful, please leave a thumbs up at the bottom of the screen and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.